Hello, hello. Are you ready to talk about last night's incredible UFC 258? Janelle here. Janelle here. <laughs> and I'm back. I'm just happy I'm back because I, I thought I got a perfect score, but I actually got four out of five pack of uh, that pack picks. I'm super excited because I started off this year horribly. So I am back on track and I actually thought I got a perfect score because I thought one of my picks just simply dropped out of the main card period, but it did not drop out. It actually just dropped to the prelims and I lost it. So let's go ahead and start there. Um, I chose Andre Ewald to beat Chris Hernandez. He did not on the prelims. I did not watch the fight. Someone let me know how it went down. I know it was a unanimous decision in favor of Chris Hernandez and he himself said he had a little problem with the length of Ewald. But other than that, let me know how that fight went down and who do you think Chris Hernandez should fight next. Now on to the main card. First up got this pick chose uh julian marquez to beat mackie patolo and he did <sighs> okay he lost the first two rounds i was like oh no he was tired by the end of the first he was coming off of an injury he had a serious injury he had been out for like almost a year if not over a year around that time so i was like oh lord here we go again but the third round in between the second and third his corner was like you need to finish him third round he found like his third win he was able to come out fire and he was able to land some serious hard shots that were actually used to those dynamic uh angles and um the way he was able to push him back bait him into bad movement and control the pace for a little bit then Mackie was like yeah let me go ahead and take you down again that's what was working for me the first two rounds uh julian was able to get back up landed some more uh hard shots which actually forced Mackie to go for another takedown because he was getting boop bopped up on the feet and in doing so he left his neck out there julian went for a um guillotine which he was going up for a, a few times to try to reverse positions um as um mackie was defending that he turned it into an anaconda choke and he tapped out so great win for uh julian marquez i think it was even in the end of the third round so it was like time was a ticket great win great fight actually good performance from both gentlemen who would you like to see julian marquez fight next i'm, I'm actually happy he's back he's kind of one of my guys to watch we'll see how he gets back uh was able to shake that ring rust off next up i chose although this is the fight that i did not make a pick on but we saw um ricky simone basically work brian kelleher brian Keller had a couple of moments but he was bleeding by the end of the first round it was the three round united decision in favor of ricky but he basically just worked and was able to take him down on the feet as well he looked faster he looked stronger who would you like to see him fight next again i did not make a pick for that next up i did make a pick for this and i got it i chose kelvin gastelum to beat ian hanik i don't have a hard time saying it even though i know how it's supposed to sound Anyway, he totally won. Uh, I had had his moments there where he landed some shots, but uh, Kelvin, this is a great performance from him. He basically won all three rounds. And I think actually one of the judges had him not winning one of the rounds or something like that. It was a weird scoring that, you know, never leaving the hands of the judges there. Even when they give it to you, it's still weird and off. But Kelvin was able to take him down, mount some nice ground and pound. He's got deceptively quick hands. He was able to land some nice shots there on the feet. He looked strong. His chin looked good. As he said himself, he was questioning whether or not he wanted to continue fighting. At 29 years old, his last couple of losses, it wasn't like he physically couldn't keep up. He was making some sloppy mental mistakes that just shouldn't have been made at his level, seeing as how he had been basically to the top. So it's like you're you're kind of going backwards here. So as he said himself, he was an important win for him. Happy to see that his mind is still in it. He's got that love for it. Who would you like Kelvin Gaslin to fight next? You know, he always hovers around that top five. So who would you like to see him fight next? Next up, I got this pick as well. This was a co-main event, and I chose... Um, uh, uh, Alexa Grasso to beat Macy Barber. I don't know if you saw my little baby right there. Yeah, it was Sam Jackson. Anyway, um, uh, Alexa Grasso to beat Macy Barbara, and she did. This uh, was a, was this, I think it was a split decision. I think this was the split decision that I was like, huh? I think it was, yes, I think it was this. But it should have been 29, 28 across the board. If it, I think I'm confusing those. Y'all help me out with the judge scoring there. <laughs> Y'all know I've been doing these videos late. Um, uh, 29, 28. Uh, Alexa Grasso actually showed off that she's seriously been improving with her grappling, with her wrestling, with her submission game. She was actually able to take Macy, who's really strong and explosive and aggressive. She was able to take her down several times in the first and second round. She was able to do some beautiful transitions with her uh, um, submission attempts. She was, when Macy took her down, she immediately started attacking off her back. You could tell she, she said she'd been working on the grappling and you could see that. You could see her putting what she learned 
into practice and it was a beautiful thing to see also nice to see that she could actually handle someone the size and strength of Macy Barbara even though Macy looked bigger bigger than her and we know how strong she is Alexa seemed to be able to hang in her quite nicely and actually get the win so this I think and as she even said to herself she was killing herself to try to make 115 so she feels comfortable at this weight you could see her getting a little bit bigger like she's getting comfortable in this weight so I'm have happy to see her hit her stride because you know she had a lot of eyes on her from the beginning and then kind of got inconsistent seems to be back on track and i'm just very happy and eager to see what's to come from the flyweight women's flyweight division who would you like to see her fight next now on to the main event and i got this pick as well and still the ufc welterweight champion the nigerian nightmare as i always forget but not today mr kamaru uzman and he uh, I mean, not only did he win the fight, but he did, definitely broke some of that stereotype of him being a boring fighter who doesn't finish fights by actually finishing Gilbert Burns, successfully defending that belt. Now, Gilbert won the first round, in my opinion, even though the score, the um, scorecard on paper, it wouldn't look like that. But if you saw the damage that he did with these shots, first round early, he clipped him, I believe it was, with the right and knocked him on all fours. Uh, it was a shot that he said he actually clipped him with before in training because, as you know, Kamara actually had to leave the training camp so they would no longer be in the same camp together to prepare for this fight. He's with Trevor Whitman now. Looks like that was a good thing for him. Uh, he, um, However, though, Gilbert started fast. Like I said, knocked him silly in the first round. Knocked him a few more times with those shots, even though Kamara was, was able to get up, was able to fight back. He got caught with a knee from Gilbert. He got caught with a couple more shots. He was kind of in survival mode, but he actually showed that he does have a tough chin. He was able to not get him down, but Gilbert was on all four on his back. Like, come on, come on down there. But you can tell that Kamara has serious respect for his grappling for that secondary black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and that submission wrestling because he would not get down. Even though he would have been in the dominant position, there was even moments where he could have had um, like side control or something like that, and he just would not get down there. He would pick his shots, uh, kick the legs while he was uh, there. He would kind of dive in and hit him to the gut and then pop back up, but he would not go down to the ground with Gilbert at all. So uh, that just shows you how good Gilbert is on the ground. Um, so the first round, like I said, even though on the scorecard probably look, or it does look like Kamara outscored him by quite a bit, the damage that was done by Gilbert's shots to me, he wins that first round. Uh, second round, Kamara was back on track fight behind that jab, honey. As I said, his win, I think y'all you know, can really see him now. Uh, you just, you got to have some attention here. Sam Jackson, all right. Uh, he's a big old, get out of here. Oh, get, get on out of here. Talking about you, all the Z just comes in automatically to start all the attention goes to him to Mr. Sam Jackson, first name Sam Jackson's hyphenated. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> second round started to fight behind that jab, he had a five inch reach advantage. As I said in my prediction video, use that jab, be more consistent with it, and he was. And it opened up much more shots. He was, uh, uh, he actually dropped him in that second round with like a um. It was kind of like a, a, I think they call it a pullback right, I think is what they called it. I'm not quite sure what the name of the shot was. It wasn't quite a jab, but he was able to, um, that came behind the jab. He actually switched stances as well and was throwing that nice jab from that southpaw position. Um, and as Trevor Whitman said, between the uh, second and third rounds, your, or the first and the third, he said your um, jab is what's making you a champion. He was right. More of the same in the third round. He actually dropped him with the straight jab. Then he began to land more shots up. Hands were up, but them shots were getting through. Ref ended up stopping the fight, so we got his TKO victory in the third round from Kamara Usman. I do agree with the stoppage. Let me know if you don't and why. This was a great win for him. Like I said, he needed a stoppage. He needed to look good and strong. He's improving with his boxing. He's improving with his kicks. We're seeing that. So he. Oh, and he also broke the record for most consecutive wins in the welterweight division. I believe it's 13. Correct me if I'm wrong. So he is cementing his spot in that whole pound for pound. Y'all need to start talking about me as he was very adamant about. You need to put some respect on my name as he made sure to let us know. Gilbert Burns was crying hard after this loss. I mean, it, I mean he was crying hard, crying hard, crying 
hard <laughs> after this loss. I don't mean to laugh, but you felt his pain. Um, and of course, Kamal, they, they do know each other. So even though there was um, some coldness before the fight started afterwards, of course, they hugged each other, said a whole lot of words to each other that we couldn't quite understand, not for us anyway. So of course, the sportsmanship, the love, the friendship was there. Again, afterwards, Kamal said, put some respect on my name. And he called out Jorge Masvidal, which if you're wondering like why, I mean, it was a very clear dominant victory for you but i guess jorge has been saying how it was six days notice and he would win if he had a full training camp that he broke his nose kumaro was saying he had a broken nose before that and he took the final short notice as well but so he called out jorge masvidal and says he wants to finish him this time y'all let me know if that's what you want he hasn't fought wonder boy yet wonder boy probably has to get another win i don't know if the win over jeff neal was enough uh, or maybe just throw him out because he hasn't fought him yet but kumaro is kind of low-key cleaning out his division like i said like he said put some mother sucking respect on my name <laughs> all right let me know how you tell your picks <laughs> let me know uh any injury updates of course and help me figure out all that during that that judging that scoring that i know i messed up there um oh well if you're still here please like the video please share it subscribe so you can get we can talk more and get more content if i could manage to put more out and <laughs> <laughs> follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram where I do my last minute picks and renegs and all of that, plus other com other content on those other platforms as well. Subscribe, like, talk to me, take care. Goodbye.